This weekend, as so many Americans pile into cars to enjoy the July 4th holiday, there's a new documentary out about a special car in theaters. Who Killed the Electric Car takes a look at one automaker's ill-fated efforts to create an alternative vehicle. General Motors began leasing its electric car, the EV1, in 1996, but seven years later, the cars were off the road. Most have been demolished. Iris Mann reports. Filmmaker Chris Payne remembers that on a whim, he started leasing an EV1 from General Motors in 1997 with the intention of using it merely as a second car. And pretty much within a month, it was the only car I drove. So five years later, I guess, when they began to pull the cars off the road, I kept thinking that there might be some kind of expose about why the cars were being removed after everybody was having such a great experience with them. And nobody was doing it. So that's about the time I decided to make a film. Payne says his car was fast, easy to charge, and produced no emissions. While making the film, he found that it wasn't just conservationists who championed the car. We talked to Reagan people, and neoconservatives really believe that these kinds of issues are not just about saving the planet, which is really important, but about no foreign oil imported. This is a big national security issue. So the issues cross over, and we tried to reflect that in the people that we talked to. Among those were some well-known fans of the EV1. Tom Hanks praised it to David Letterman. Believe it or not, that sucker goes. And really? he will take you down to PCH so fast you can get a ticket. By right. driving an electric car, what are you sparing us from? I'm saving America, Dave. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I am saving America. The second half of the movie is an attempt to identify the forces responsible for the demise of the EV-1. The film posits a list of suspects at a...